Hey there and welcome. Today you're going to learn how to do technical SEO for your website. And all of this means is we'll cover things like image, the proper image size for your website, the image compression that you need to do for your images on your website. We'll cover site speed as well as making sure that your site is crawlable and indexable by Google. So if you're ready, let's dive in. This video is brought to you by WP Forms. WP Forms is the most beginner friendly drag and drop WordPress forms plugin on the market. Just click on the link in the description below to get started. The first 200 people to use coupon code WPBVIP will get 50% off WP Forms. One of the first things you want to make sure that you have is you want to make sure that Google can reach your site. So there's a couple of places that you want to check your site for. So let's go ahead and head over to our WordPress dashboard. Once you do that, you can scroll down to your settings and go to reading. From here, you want to scroll all the way down and make sure that the search engine visibility is not checked. And that just means because if it's checked, then Google may crawl your site, but it might not index it. So make sure that this is unchecked. A lot of times when people are just starting on their site, they tend to put something up where they don't want search engines to see them. So they tend to also forget once they're live to uncheck this. So make sure that that's not checked. And if it is checked, go ahead and uncheck it and then make sure you click save settings. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your website is being able to be seen and crawled by Google. The one of the most important things that you want to have connected with your website is you want to have Google Search Console connected to your site. And you can watch this video to get connected if you don't have that. Once you connect your site, you'll have to give it a couple of days. The Google Search Console is about two days behind on the data by default. So the first thing you want to do is go to the website that you're looking at. This is our test website. So and go down to site maps. You want to see if you have submitted a site map and a site map is something that you have on your website that tells Google the whole list of pages and posts that you want them to know about. It's quite easy to get it set up, especially if you're using an SEO plugin. As usual, we recommend Yoast. So you probably have Yoast set up. You may also have something like all in one SEO set up. They also show case your site map. So we'll need to find the site map URL to do that. Head back over to your WordPress dashboard and go over to SEO and we'll go to SEO general. This is for Yoast SEO. I'm showing you where the site map can be found for your site. So under general, we'll go to the features tab. And these are all the features that are set up by default on your site. Under XML sitemaps, you can click on the little question mark and then it will have our actual sitemap for our site. So I want to open this up in a new tab and then let's take a look. So you can see this is my domain and then this is my sitemap index and it has three links here and you can see when they're last modified. The most important one probably for a blogging site is your post sitemap. And this is all the blog posts that you have on your website. When I click on that, I see all of them here. Like I said, it's a list that you tell Google of all your most important pages and blogs on your site. It also tells Google the last modified date for your website. And that's critical when making sure that Google continues to come back and check your site for updates. Then I'm going to go back and then you also see the pages and that's for any of your static pages like about or contact. And then you can also possibly have categories if you have your site set up to index your categories as well. So we want to actually get this link. So I'm going to highlight that and I want to copy. Now that we have it copied, we want to go back to our search console. And from here, we want to enter our site map. We can submit it. And then Google will go out and verify that they see it. And you see it, you should see a status here. And it'll take a little while for Google to process this. Now, once that happens, then the next thing you want to do is check your coverage. You want to make sure that you're getting valid pages from Google. So if I click on this, Google sees valid pages that are coming. And you notice because we didn't have one submitted, a sitemap submitted, it says that these items are indexed, meaning they're in the Google search results, but they weren't in a sitemap. So it's possible that you can get 
your pages indexed and crawled by Google without having it. But the sitemap just helps improve that process and letting Google know what all is happening with your site. And so these are all the pages that Google has in their index. So you just want to make sure that your site is getting coverage. If your site wasn't getting coverage and if it wasn't being crawled, then you would probably get errors somewhere along here. Or if you have nothing, then that just means that Google hasn't found your site yet. If you're a very new website, the first step that you'll want to make sure you do is submit the sitemap and tell Google that you're out there. Going back into my sitemap items, you can also see this area over here on the last time that it was crawled. So you'll want to make sure that you see a most recent crawl date for your website to know that Google is continuing to come back to your site to crawl it and to index and crawl any new pages that you have. The next thing you want to look at for your site is to make sure that your site speed is good. By default, you want your site speed to be less than three seconds, meaning when somebody comes to your site, it should take them no longer than three seconds to wait before your page loads. And that's actually come down quite a bit from even just a couple of years ago where it used to be as much as seven seconds. Let me show you a tool that you can use to analyze your site speed. Is it WP is one of our sister sites and you can type in the domain of your site and click analyze. And what it will do is it'll go out and check your site load time and give you an overall performance as well as give you some ideas of how to improve it. So my load time for this site is 0.85 seconds, which is really good. Anything less than three seconds is great for users. They won't bounce as quickly. You get an overall grade performance. Now we're looking at this and we want to make sure that our site is pretty fast, but don't get too bogged down in the improvements. I can see a lot of people will spend like their whole weekend trying to get an A or 100. A lot of times that's just not going to happen. You want to just make sure that your site is fast enough and that your page size is as small as it can. And we'll cover that with image compression in a minute. So this is a pretty good load time. If your site was higher than three seconds, then you'll want to cover some things and make sure that they, that you can get the site down lower. Some of the things that you could do would be like enable a caching plugin on your site, do compression, which will do some image compression. I'll show you how to do that in a second. You can do browser caching. And all that means is there's a plugin that you can add to your website. It kind of takes a snapshot of what your site is so that it's faster the next time somebody comes to your site. You always, always can improve your images and making sure that they are set up properly for your site. One of the biggest things we see that happens with bloggers is they will typically have really large images on their site. And just having a really large image that you take straight from your phone and you upload to your website, or if you download it from a free or royalty free image site, straight to your website, that's going to increase and bloat your site quite a bit. And let me show you what I mean. For example, this is a blog post that by default has this big, huge featured image. And you see, it's actually not even coming up properly, but it's probably bogging down my site. So if you, if your theme has things like featured image, you really want to take a look at that and see how can you reduce that or maybe even remove the featured image version. It doesn't really help or lend anything extra to your reader. And if it's reducing the speed of your site, then that's probably not a good thing. The other thing you want to do is go in and find a blog post that you have an image on, right click on that, go to inspect. And what we want to do is we want to see what is the theme setting up for our site image. And you want to make any image that you upload the maximum. For instance, this is 520 by 293. I don't care about the length of it or the how high it is, the height of it. I only care about the width and I want to make sure that none of my images are wider than 520 that I upload to the site because the theme itself won't go any larger. So anything over 520 width will be reduced down anyway. And so then that's extra data that will be bogging down my site. The easiest way to work with images for your site is before you upload them, open them in a 
program that you have on your desktop or on your Mac and resize the image. So I will use paint. I have paint on my PC. You can use paint. I think there's a like photos for your Mac if you want. And we are going to resize this image. You see, this is a huge image and I'm going to click on the resize area. I want to go in pixels because I want to know the pixels. I know that my theme max width is 520 and we want to maintain aspect ratio. So I'm going to put in 520 for horizontal and then the vertical will just go however much the aspect ratio will allow it and then click OK. And now that's going to resize that. And now we can save that. And then we are going to upload to our site. Now, the next part, you also want to compress your images. And depending on which product or which solution you use, you're either going to compress them before you upload, or there are also plugins that you can use that once you upload, the plugin will compress for you. So let me show you two really good methods that you can use. So we've resized this image. And now we need to compress it. And all that compression means is it's going to take out some extra data from the image, but we're not going to see that difference. So, but it will reduce the size of it immediately. So right now we have 54 kilobytes on this image, which is great because when I undo what I just did, the original size was 1.5 megabytes. So just by reducing that size was amazing. We can even do one more thing to get it a little bit lower if we can. And we'll use tiny PNG. And what this will do is it will take our image. So I'm going to upload it. And remember, it was 53 kilobytes. And it's going to compress it all. And it will be available for us to download once it's done compressing. Great. And it's even smaller. So just realize, even just that little bit, if you multiply that across multiple, multiple images on your site, then you're really reducing the overall size of your site. So we're going to download that and we'll overwrite the image. So now we have it available that we can upload to our site. Now, if you don't want to go through that process of uploading your images to a website and then downloading them and then uploading them to your website, then you can install a plugin for that. There are several plugins that you can use to compress your images. But for this video, I'm going to show you short pixel. So we'll go to plugins and you have to go to add new and then type in short pixel. And this is a freemium plugin. So there's about a hundred images that they will compress for you a month. And then you can purchase an upgraded version if you need more. So we're going to go ahead and install that. And then once it's installed, we need to also make sure that we stick around so that we can activate it. So we'll click on this and we'll request a key and then you'll get an API key. From here, you can just set up the settings for the plugin. We're going to keep the lossy compression and we want to apply the compression to anything that we already have on our site. And then you can keep a backup of the original images. This is great if something goes wrong, you have them in a separate folder that you can get them. Going down further, photos have exif tags that are attached to them from cameras, and you can remove that because it's just a little bit of extra data that you don't need. And then you can also decide to resize the largest images. And just like what we were talking about earlier, you want to decide what is the largest image that your theme allows and go ahead and make that the maximum size for your website. Once we save changes, we can also do a bulk process. And what it will do is it will go out and do that to all of the images that you currently have on your website. Once it's done, it will give you the ultimate reduction of each image and how it did for everything. So once that's finished, then that's a great way to really reduce the size of your site when somebody comes to that. And that should handle quite a bit of the issues that you might see with site speed. We could even go back here and reanalyze our site to see if it reduces the load and the page size even more. And you see, just by doing the image changes, it has reduced our load time and our page size on our site like that. 
And so those are some really quick and easy ways to improve your site's technical SEO to improve the usability for your readers. So let me know in the comments below, which method are you going to use first to improve your technical SEO on your website? And thanks for watching.